ADNA is just shorthand for ancient DNA. And ancient DNA is different to the DNA that we have because it's been in the ground for a very, very long time, which means it's often fragmented and broken up into bits. And it's preserved very differently throughout the skeleton, which is why we targeted the teeth. We sent the tooth to McMaster University in Canada and they were able to extract the dentine which is a soft brown material inside and then from that they could extract DNA and they looked at different types of DNA for us. They looked at the maternal DNAs, often known as mtDNA, so that told us about where their maternal ancestry came from. They also then looked at DNA which informed us about a person's hair and eye colour they then looked at the DNA of the pathogens that that person suffered from during life. Often, and the really good bit about this is, that they're able to identify pathogens that we can't see on the skeleton. And then they were finally able to inform us about their chromosomes, so they were able to tell us whether they were male or female. The Harper Road woman is a really important person to us here at the museum. She was buried sometime between AD 50 and AD 70, and so she was an absolute first generation Londoner. She was alive at the time of the Roman invasion of Britain, and as the city came into being around AD 47, she was one of the very first people to come here. Because the museum has been able to undertake all sorts of tests on the Harper Road woman, we found some amazing things about her. We took one of her teeth and we sent it to McMaster University where they were able to tell us that she had brown eyes and that she had medium brown hair and that also she suffered from bad breath so she had periodontal disease. The Harper Road woman's maternal DNA that reflects her maternal ancestry, so um, where her mother's line came from. Her mother is very definitely European, so we can place her mother's ancestral line in Northern Europe. She was buried in a very particular way. She has a flagon at her head, she has two Roman dishes at her feet, she has a mirror that's been imported all the way from Italy, and she has a bronze necklace that has been placed at her feet. What this burial is telling us is that there was something special about her, that the people who buried her went to some effort to make sure that she was remembered in a particular way. The most exciting discovery we made about Harper Road Woman is that chromosomally she's male, which was a very big surprise for us because skeletally she's, she's looking very, very female. So when we looked into this further, we discovered that with the cell biology, that actually having just male or female is, is no longer true, that actually biological sex is more of a spectrum. So people may be um, look entirely female but chromosomally be male and vice versa. So there's no reason why Harper Road woman ever knew about this because there may not have been any outward sign of the fact that she had male chromosomes. This result is, is incredibly significant. It is the first time, to the best of our knowledge, that an individual from the archaeological record has had this mismatch in terms of their skeletal um, sex and their chromosomal. So she's absolutely unique. The Lance Street teenager had a fascinating story to tell us. We took a piece of her rib and we looked at the carbon and the nitrogen values and they told us what she was eating. And that showed us that she was eating a London diet. So she's eating a diet very similar to everybody else living in Roman London at the time, which contained some fish and some animals and some vegetables. We looked at the isotopes in her teeth, so we looked at the dental enamel, and that was very, very interesting because that showed us that she'd actually grown up in North Africa. So she may have actually come from somewhere like Carthage. Now sadly, she spent the last four or five years of her life here, and though we don't know why she died, she was buried in the Lant Street area sometime between AD 300 and 400. She's buried with some glassware and some pottery, which is found in other locations, but she's buried with two very special objects. One of the objects is an ivory-handled folding knife, and the handle has been carved into the shape of a leopard, which is eating some meat. And this knife, the, although there are only maybe two or three from the rest of Britain, this has very close parallels to Carthage, which was um, Rome's enemy for many, many years, and that was located in North Africa. So written in her bones were other messages for us to discover. Because she was actually quite tall. So the average height of a Roman woman in London is, a, is five foot four. And she, by the age of 14, had already reached five foot three. What this girl reminds us is that London has always been a diverse cosmopolitan place. Our project has shown us that Londoners are even more interesting than we 
ever could have possibly imagined. And we hope that this project will enable us to widen our study of them.